Good morning. So, uh, where were we yesterday? Uh, yesterday we were in the middle of uh, um, doing tests for my add goal API. And we hit a bit of a weird error. Um, the SQL mock was um, complaining about the insert into the goal, um, saying, what was it? Yeah. Argument one expecting expected string wibble does not match actual string dash. So, and I couldn't work out what was going on there. But it did occur to me afterwards that I'm not passing in enough information yet. So, um, for example, I am not passing in wibble. So it's expecting um, a verb of wibble. And I've not actually started filling that out yet. So it may just be that I'm just not passing in the expected value. So uh, let's start filling that out and see if that changes um, how things go. So we need another thing here. So the next actual JSON uh, value is going to be the verb. And we're going to make that just wibble. Could hard code that. Yeah. Um, let's see if that actually makes a change to the error because I expect it will now complain about value or something like that. We'll see. Uh, here we go. Okay. Different error there. Well, oh, maybe I. Did I um oh, did I take out some of the test in there? No. Oh yeah, I moved it back. Okay. So uh let's bring that back up so that's tested first, so we can see what's going on. Huh, that's interesting. Oh, bad Jason. Here we go. Right, so. The domain expectation which was not matched, expect a group, blah, blah, blah. Should return rows. Right, okay. Yeah, so it's just not. Yeah, so it's explained. Yeah, yeah. So now we've got to the point where it's um, expecting 10, uh, but it's getting zero. So yeah, so it's doing, it is doing what I'm ex what I thought. Um, it's just. We're trying to test the happy path here, but we haven't got a happy path yet. We haven't set all the values that we expect to go in and all that kind of stuff. So let's just fill this out then. So we have a verb, value, a prefix, suffix, a end date, Uh, reason, measurement value, and date taken. Oh, and notes as well. Okay. So I think we're good there. So value. And for our test, we are doing a value of... Ten. Oh, that is a float, isn't it? Oh, I hate to just end it. It's a bit cold this morning. Uh, oh no, yeah, float sixty-four is what we expected. Yeah, so I'm passing in 
a decimal value there just in case. I might test that later. Um, value prefix is just going to be an empty string for this test. Suffix, we're going to say times. So we've got yeah, value, prefix, suffix, um, end date. That'll be interesting. Okay, so end date. Uh, I'll come back to that in a sec. I think I'll need to do a little bit of work on that one. Might need to grab the end date from up there. Yeah, we'll just quickly fill in the rest. End date, uh, reason, um, what else we got? Let's quickly take that while we're up there. That's going to be the notes. Now this, I think, is, um, OK, let's get rid of these things. We don't need them anymore. Now, if I'm right, I think I made that measurement value yeah um and we are passing in zero Again, that will be float. And now we've got another date here. Date taken. Uh, which we're doing time. Oh, we're doing the time now. That's not going to work very well. I'll have to pick a, um, I'll have to cut a variable for that and reuse it. Okay, so let's see. This should fail miserably just now because I'm not passing in an end date. Um, so let's double check that. It's not what I expected. Why is it now failing on? Oh, I know why again, 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 again. As I left the trail in comma. Okay. What? Same problem. Oh, that's probably because of the dates. Okay, let's just fill in a date then. Uh, we need to do that. So we have an end date up here, um, which is sixty days ahead. I'm taking the token date. And creating a clean date without minutes and seconds. That's good. Um, so I should be able to just use that. Uh, 
Um, so how do I, so that's got to be a in 64, hasn't it? Yeah, so we've got an end date in 64, the same for the date taken as well. So now, in theory then, I can close off and restart, and then I should be able to do something with end date here. So I want end date in Unix format, but now I've got, got to convert that to a string. Now I think I've done that before. Where have I done that? Because it's not normal. It's not, you can't just do string. Uh, wasn't it I to A? Yeah. Oh, but that was on uh, int. I, ah, okay, there we go. I to A is equivalent to format int. Takes an N64 base 10 by looks of things. Okay, we'll try that format int. Uh, so, str dot format int give it a ten um I kind of want to do the same for date taken, actually. So what we need is date taken date. And we need to use that here as well. And it should be, if I want to be consistent, with what I actually provide at the moment in the JSON and so on, I should make sure I do it a bit like the end date because I'm creating, I'm creating a date with no hours, minutes and seconds. I believe. Well, even so, it's a good test to make sure I do use that. That would be the happy path. I can always test putting in duff. Well, not duff, but hours, minutes, and seconds as a second test. Um, so. kind of want it to be today's date, don't know, because I'm using 60 days ahead for the end date. Um, so let's do Let's do the same as this, kinda. 
Oops. But we will use time now. Make sure it's UTC and then get the date, get the year, month, day, and then date taken will be the new year date, year, month, day. Yeah, okay, that should work. So we are passing in a member ID which we fake up earlier. We've got a token stream which we faked up. We are hard coding Wibble 10, no prefix, a suffix of time, end date, reason, measurement value, date taken, and notes. And I think that's it. And no trailing comma this time. Okay, let's see what we get now. Huh, still a problem. Hence is why it does not match actual float 10. Oh, okay, because my args on the inserts are wrong. I'm not specifying float. Okay. Oh, it almost passed. <laughs> oh, my uh, my little test there for goal ID is wrong. Don't. Okay, because I am passing back an ID because it is What was, what was that previous test then that I used goal ID that I copied it from? Or did I just like make it up on the fly? My stuff. Okay, that's fine. So let's just test. We've got token string, or we, oh, we should test for saved true. Get an ID and a token string. Currently empty because I haven't implemented that yet. And then authentication error. Should also be empty. Okay. That means I don't need to do that negative because I'm expecting a positive empty. I'm expecting some sort of ID, potentially some sort of token ID. I'm also expecting a saved true 
saved true ID token and authentication. Pass. Pass. Cool. Okay. Good stuff. Okay. Now, do I want to keep that log in there? Probably not for the moment. Can always put it back later if I need to. It's handy there though. Okay, so is this good? Have we got a good happy path here? Do a lot of setup here that we could, we could probably put it in that create API server type thing. Could maybe uh, maybe create a setup. I'll come back to that. So we are hard coding a member ID. Um, we have a token date, token string, okay. This query should have args in it. Otherwise, yeah. With arcs, um, pretty sure that's going to be member ID. And token string. Otherwise, yeah, because that just narrows it down a bit. We're creating a token date with no hour, minute, second, a date taken of today. Add row. Right, so that's a goal ID, isn't it? Which I'm using again. So let's take that out.
opens that up. And then that's a hard coded measurement ID that's coming back. Do we care about that? It doesn't harm to take it out, I suppose, and stick it somewhere. I might refactor these later and put these up into um, module level so that I can just use them through a bunch of tests. Hence why I'm doing that just now. So... That's got args, the other one's got args. Okay, so what we can do So what we could do here is we could clean up again because I think I'm going to reuse this stuff. So verb, ripple. The value is 10. Prefix. An empty string suffix equals times got an end date already. Move them around in a sec and our reason. Exactly, didn't it? Let's not do that. Keep them up there. Okay. Verb. Value. Okay, that's a bit cleaner. And now I can use them down here.
Why is that broken? Oh, because that's a... Uh, I've got to do a string conv again, haven't I? That's 10. Is that oh okay I wonder if there is a look oh no what's all that stuff So what's the my what's the year again there? No exponent digital. Yeah, okay. That's with exponent. Exponent. I don't really care about exponent. So I should better just use F, I think. So I should be able to use minus one there. And then 64. What does pass flow do then? No, oh, it's the opposite. Okay, what about float value? Uh, I forgot what the args are now. Um, format, precision, and size. So it's the format of float, the precision of minus one, and the size of 64. Copy that. And 
unstick that again. Here. From measurement value, which we haven't done yet. Okay. Do that a sec. Oops. We are doing what we're doing here. Prefix. Suffix. Reason, measurement value, date taken. And notes, which we haven't got yet. So we need some notes. a measurement right here. Sometimes I wish I hadn't used measurement as my name for those things. It's hard to type sometimes. Uh, so measurement value is going to be zero. So we have Pass that in there. Thanks. Okay. We'll need stuff there. Verb, value, prefix, suffix, reason, measurement notes, and then we get back goal ID. We add a row, we get back some time, don't care, as well as the goal ID. We're passing in a member ID, verb, value, prefix, suffix, end day reason. We are then getting back another measurement ID. Where's that to find? So just above it. Yeah, maybe I should move them. There. Okay. All right. Cross your fingers. 
Mwahaha. Good stuff. We have a great goal. So I add goal test. Happy path. So everything. It's doing. As we expect. Resulting in some JSON. With values. Hold on, we can test that ID. We know it because we are supplying it up there. So we should be able to um, stick goal ID in there. Good stuff. Can I make that fail? Let's see uh, if I if I do that. Okay. Not perfect, but does the job good. Okay. Well, I think we should commit that. So this change will add p and API test. Let's push that. Okay. Let's see. See how that goes. That's off and running. Source art is back to doing proper builds again, so should be doing its thing. Okay. Come back and check that in a minute. So it looks like how long does it take? About six minutes, okay. Right. Now, do we test a couple of failures or do I? Yeah, I probably should. Um, well, actually. Do I want to do a little bit of refactoring here before I start again? Because it's going to be a bit annoying doing all that over and over again. I bet there is. Let's find out about go testing. See if it's got a um, 
the setup thing. main So let's clean up. Hmm. So there's a clean up. They're not a setup. It's not a run. Okay, so I guess, I guess there is no kind of setup function by default. Hmm, okay. Uh, do I care? I guess if... If I keep the setup to a function I call from each test that uses it, just like a little setup function, at least then I know which ones are using it and which aren't. And I know I have a bunch of variables available. But I can go from the test into it. So that's the test doing. Installed and build as testing at the moment. That's good. Okay. Let's do. So what we are interested in is this and that. And we're doing this all the time. So I 
let's change the name of this. Let's change this to um, setup API tests test. And we're going to return not only a server, but wherever that is. So that is a pointer to an is dot i. Oh, yeah, it's different, isn't it? Uh, is it because of the conflicts? Um, server and the mock which is just an SQL mock We're trying that. So we are going to pass in it's going to turn is and and we're going to take out all of this. Stick it in here. Oh, I better pass in a T then. Okay. Just move that out a bit.
just so I know when I come back. Set up API test. Creates common uh, variables, objects, variables used in API tests. Okay. Don't care about mock there. Do care about it there. Huh, is that the first use of error? It's good. Okay. Login. Take out all that. Catch the error. I'm going to move that up. That was quite useful having the SQL stuff been checked before checking the API. Kind of caught a few things there. Same again here then. Do that before I do the API tests. And here, clean up. Do the tests. Check the SQL worked and then check the actual API output. Okay. Nothing daft there. That's good. All right, let's see if that works. Nope. <laughs> okay. Oh. Oh, well, that's interesting. It's closed. Hmm. Is that because I'm not handling the clothes?
And maybe I need to pass that back. I don't want it to close as soon as that function finishes. I want it to close after the test that's called it finishes. So I will have to return that. And then do the defer in each test. <clears throat> so getting back an SQL DB. Okay. Get rid of that. Okay. That should do us. Okay, so we basically set up everything and then we defer close the DB in the test and then we would start a new one, blah, blah, blah. Okay, good stuff. That's a lot cleaner. That means I can put up I'll put any variables in there as well if I decide to. If I set them up as a global, global module level, I could create a few common used variables in there and reset them. Which would be quite nice. But for the moment, we will keep them in the um, in the test functions. Talk about things like this because I'm probably going to reuse that a lot. But we haven't created another test function yet to use them, so too early to refactor. Okay, let's commit that.
Okay, let's push that out. Let's see how our build went. It passed. That's good. Six minutes. Cypress Fran. Go test. Did its thing there. In 0 0.037 seconds. That's not bad. Um the client does its thing. So that is the Cypress stuff. And then the charm. That's got hardly anything. Uh, yeah, it does like nothing, hardly anything. So I need to look at that sometime. Put some tests in there. But all the Python and stuff that's going on in there. Be for another day. Cool. All right, well, I think that's enough for today. Um, so I've now finished my test of the ad goal, happy path. Um, next time I need to do a few tests to make sure of failures. So that problem I had yesterday where it was complaining about not having um, an argument for the insert. Um, that could happen if we get Duff Jason coming into the server. So one of the things I definitely need to test is the failure conditions, and I need to catch that because I'm obviously not at the moment. Um, and I need to say, okay, well, you haven't passed in a verb. You need to pass in a verb. You need to pass in um, a value. And you need to pass in one of. Well, no, you don't actually. Um, you need to pass in an end date. I was going to say one of prefix or suffix, but you don't. Um, there's probably, you probably don't need to. Yeah, I'll come to that. Um, and then again, you need to pass in some sort of measurement value and a date taken as well. Um, we're not going to take it for granted that it's today, although I could do a suppose. Um, but yeah, so there's got to be some valuation, uh, valuation, validation put into the API, which isn't there yet because it's raw. Um, and so we can do some red green testing next time to make sure that happens and get it working. Uh, but that's for another day. So um, till next time, uh, take care and uh, stay safe.